Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and this episode is a jQuery look at Tim Van Dam's uh, portfolio website. So uh, Jonathan Deber, if uh, I'm pronouncing that correctly, has written in and, 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 and just kind of pointed to Tim Van Dam's website and saying how um, interesting it looks and, and uh, just asking about how some of the effects were created. So I wanted to look at that and show you how uh, to deconstruct some of these effects. So this is Tim's website, um, obviously very cool looking um, uh, for a designer. So the first thing that you'll see is when you roll your mouse over, this really nice little effect happens. Now the thing about this is um, it's actually a CSS effect. It's using CSS transitions to, to move and animate the margin left. Um, and also you'll see it darkens as well, which is um, using RGB alpha, which is just adding a, a kind of semi-transparent layer in between. Sorry, tra semi-transparent tra semi background color, which makes it darken a little bit. Um, and the second effect here is um, just just JavaScript, which is uh, I've decided to call an accordion bounce, uh, just to give it a name. Um, so when you click on it, the whole thing kind of rolls up and, and um, drops down. What I'm going to do is show you with jQuery how to recreate this um, uh, this CSS only effect. Now, generally, <clears throat> or not generally, as a rule of thumb, I would argue with uh, your client or with the client that you should use progressive enrichment, which is what this is. This is saying that this effect. So let me show you this effect in in Firefox. Okay, this effect still works, but there's no animation. But the the actual intention is exactly the same. Um, but in Safari, because it happens to have animations in in CSS or transitions in CSS, it just looks a little bit sexier. So I would argue that a CSS method is the better way to do things. Um, if it's just kind of adding this extra uh, thin layer of glossiness on your websites. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do it. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it using JavaScript. And occasionally, um, you'll have a client who insists that it looks exactly the same across all browsers. Now you may say we're not going to do the animation at all, it may be part of the, the, the spec. Um, I've had clients where um, it, it needs to look exactly the same across all browsers because they have license payers um, and and they have to make it match. So that's the first part of the tutorial. The second part will look at this, this bounce effect. Actually before I dive in I should quickly show you the um, the CSS, the the, the uh, WebKit transitions, um, just so you can you can see what it looks like. Master CSS, I believe. Um, so that's the uh, the WebKit transition. So it's saying background color, um, 0.5 seconds, so 250 milliseconds, um, linear ease in, and when it hovers. It sets the the RGB A to to this, and you'll see it on margin left as well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's why it jumps um, the margin left when I roll over. Uh, and in WebKit, it will ease out. Right. So here's a, a few components I've t prepared. Um, these are obviously um, Tim's images, so don't go stealing them. I've, uh, quote, borrowed them for this demo, um, <clears throat> and I've completely redone the the, uh, the tab effect. But, so you can see I've got the CSS already kind of marked up. It doesn't go darker, it's just a uh, um, uh, pretty straightforward kind of markup. This is just a big link. So this is one big link um, inside of a UL that has an image and uh, this is a strong bit and when we roll over it's just setting the margin left I'm not sure if you can see that, let's have a look, inspect margin left 5px, so you can see it down here okay so let's go to our code I'm just going to comment out part 2 just so that we've got 
the, the first pass to focus on. <clears throat> right, so I've included jQuery from uh, our friend Google. And I've put my JavaScripts at the bottom. If I put my JavaScripts at the bottom, I don't need document.ready. Okay, I don't need this because at this point in the, the markup, the document is ready. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get rid of this. So to create this hover shift, the, 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 the things that I need to do are when I hover over the anchor, I need to grab this image and change it, animate its margin left to 5, and when I hover off, animate the margin left to 10. So that is pretty straightforward. A dot hover. Let's uh, actually let's narrow the targeting there. <clears throat> so hover takes two functions. The the first one is um, what to do when you hover on, and the second is to what to do when you hover off. So we are going to image this, so find the image within the anchor element and animate margin left to 5 and animate the margin left to 10 when we roll out. So let's have a look at this. And it works at not at all. <laughs> Right, so clearly I've messed something up. Should we double check that we're even getting into the hover? What a great start. Yes, we are. Okay. Um, animate. Oh, we've missed the timing. T50. Yep, if you don't give it a timing, it will just change the CSS. And I'm talking rubbish. This is a great start. Awesome. What am I missing? Okay, right, let's grab that image. Stick an ID on this just to try it out. Oh, let's stick an ID on this one. Okay, so this is how I'm going to debug a little.